guys and welcome to my youtube channel i'm paul nyaroso if it's your first time you're visiting my channel make sure you click the subscribe button below and click on the bell icon to enable notifications so in this video today i'll be disassembling a hp desktop so the first thing you do just uh, remove the sideboard so there you go Guys, inside the system unit, you can see you have the hard disk again, the ROM and the other components inside the hard disk. The sorry, the system unit. So, what you do, just remove this side here. First, study the connections that the system unit. So, it depends the system unit. In this case, this is the arrangement and organization of my system unit. So, I remove the Disconnector. So, and this is my hard disk. So, as you can see, these are 500 gigabytes hard disk. So, again, I disconnect this one. So, just click back. Then, there you go. This is now my DVD drive. So, you can see. Let me just remove it. This is my DVD drive. So here in the system unit, so these are during disassembly. Make sure you carefully study the cables inside the system unit. So these cables here, this is the SATA cable. These are the SATA cable. So the first thing you do during the disassembling, first remove the sideboard, then the, depending on the organization of your system, then remove the hard drive. So as you've done that, again remove the RAM. This is the RAM here. Random access memory, as you can see. These are four gigabytes. So the next thing to do, you remove the power supply. So this is my power supply. So go on and remove the power supply. So guys, the system depends the compatibility of your system. So you remove the power supply. So here, this is the, this is the power supply. So first, make sure you've disconnected the from the motherboard and the other drives connected to the power supply through these cables. Yep. So after removing all of them, now you can successfully remove the power supply. So removing the power supply. So just push, push it. So this the power supply. So I've said uh, the hardware part depends on the compatibility of your system. So this is my power supply. Just put it on set plus. So the next thing you do is uh, remove the side fan over here. So this is the side fan. So the side fan helps in cooling the system. So it depends the how your system was made. So in my case, I only have uh, one side form, which I'm just showing you right now. So you remove this side form. Again, after that, then disconnect it from the system. So this is my side form. So I've now remained the motherboard. So this is the motherboard as you can see. So I'm going on and disassembling it completely. So I remove the motherboard. So this is the motherboard. So so you should handle the motherboard carefully. And this is the specified items to open the motherboard. So you open all the nuts, take off all the nuts. 
during disassembling, make sure that you are placing your nuts at a safer place so that the nut won't get lost or won't get mixed up with the other nuts. So guys, on the motherboard, we have the CMOS responsible for booting and keeping the time. So, so it is assembling your machine. Remember the order and step by step proceed it. So this is how we do it. It's a simple remove all the screws and place them on a safe ground. Again, the motherboard should be placed at a very safe place. motherboard contains the system unit sorry the central processing unit and again you have the dump slots and very many items mounted on the motherboard so there you go we're now done the taking of the screws Okay guys, so what you do next, you just have to remove this other side, this part here. It's holding the motherboard. So again guys, now I want to show you the CPU. So what I'm now disassembling is this uh, CPU form. So just do it carefully. So guys, there you go, there you go. Heat sink over here. This is now the CPU fan. Both the heat sink and the CPU fan helps in cooling the CPU. So down here, this is the CPU. This is the chip down here. So I'm just showing to you. So guys, this is the CPU. And as you can see, the thermal phase is still good. So just place it at a safer place. Now so guys you can now Take off the you can now remove the motherboard. So this is now our motherboard. So as you can see the motherboard contains very many components. This is the motherboard. So over here this is the CMOS responsible for booting the system and uh, it helps in booting so again keeping time so sometimes you may boot, uh, boot up your computer then you see that it's indicating that the system battery is too low or the time should be said CMOS is responsible for that again you have the this and all our RAM slots over here so in my case, this motherboard has two RAM slots. So this is the position of the central processing unit. So over here you have the SATA ports. So my computer is having three SATA ports. This SATA 0, SATA 1, and SATA 2. So again, this now the connection. 
from the power supply this one here these are the connection from the power supply and so this is now the back panel of the system unit so as you can see at this point here this is now the ethernet port this is the videographic port this is now the audio port this is now the hdmi these others are the usb the universal serial port sorry serial bus so as you can start with the motherboard this is now the position of the central processing unit now this is the central processing unit this chip over here this chipset is the central processing unit this other gray element this is the heat sink and this is the fan cpu fan so the cpu fan heat sink and the thermal fans so the thermal fans helps in cooling the cpu because when the computer processing the cpu then heats so that's about the disassembling of the system unit so in during the assembly of the system unit carefully follow the order and uh, you will find the things going on so what you do just start the motherboard proceed uh, with the uh, other elements that are there so in this case you start the motherboard so i'll be just to move the CMOS this is the CMOS battery so when the CMOS battery is faulty you can reset it or even you can replace it so again here we have the expansion slots where you can put the expansion card for example the network interface card or the video graphic adapters and others so now this is now the front panel front parts of the system unit this mine here this is now the front part of the system unit have the usb and the audio depending on the, your system unit so guys thanks for watching subscribe to my channel for more updates